we're making apple pie. What do we need for apple pie? We need a ton of apples. Take a look at this bowl. This is six pounds. Six pounds of apples is going to cook down to that. And you're thinking, well, oh my God, where's that water gonna go? It's all, all that juice is gonna go into the crust. Well, no, it's not. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks on how to, to get a pie where the filling is perfectly cooked, perfectly sweetened and balanced, with a nice crispy bottom crust, it is possible, and a nice flaky top. So, let's make pie. So we're gonna start with all-purpose flour and make sure everything is really, really cold. That's really important because if the fat starts to melt before you're ready for it to melt in the oven, um, then um, your pastry gets all greasy and yucky. And, uh, ugh. So <clears throat> I've got the blade here, I just took out of the freezer. Um, if you can fit the bowl in the freezer, stick that in there too. Um, and if you can chill the flour as well, do that too. So I have, here, you can get the recipe down there. You know, like, like if, you want to, if you want to cook along, bake along, go ahead, get the recipe. Um, this is just over a pound. I got mm, 18 ounces of flour. And as I've said before, whenever you're doing pastry, and I know as I'm saying read it and leave it, which I am reading it and leaving it, but when you're doing pastry, you really want to weigh all of this stuff for the most part because you get a much more precise measurement and then you're pretty certain that it'll come out the way it should. So I've got, what did you say? 18 ounces of flour. I've got three ounces of just plain granulated sugar. Um, there was some salt in there, half a teaspoon, kosher. So once I have this uh, filled with the dried ingredients, I'm just gonna, Whirl it around, just to mix it, that's all I'm doing. Then we're gonna add all the fat. Beautiful, beautiful butter. I'm using unsalted shortening. <laughs> just kidding, there's no such thing. It's just shortening. Anyway. Um, just make sure it's nice and cold. And then we're gonna give this a little whirl uh, pulses. Let's count together, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do I hear eight? Ah, eight. Do I hear, oh, that was nine. Do I hear ten? Ten. Uh, that was eleven. Do I hear twelve? Twelve. Okay, twelve. Soul to the nice lady in the back of the room. Um, so if you're looking at this now, you're thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of stuff in there. The bowl's not big enough. If you have a larger bowl, use a larger bowl. Um, I'm, going, I'm purposely doing this. No, I'm not. I just don't have a larger bowl. So we're gonna be using this one, but I will show you what you can do. It's a cool little trick that I developed years and years ago. I'm gonna add the water. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just throwing it in there all at once. You don't have to do the whole, don't be afraid. You know, everybody's afraid of pie dough. Oh, I'm gonna screw it up. Just, if you're afraid, you're gonna screw it up. Just go for it, right? Now, this is when you normally pulse, right? And then it forms a little ball and it starts to go <laughs> around the bowl. And then you take it out. Well, I have too much in here, right? We've established that fact. So what I'm gonna do is something that's gonna look really bizarre. Okay, so when the blade is going on the bottom, right, you're getting a lot more activity down there and you're creating heat, right, friction, but the stuff on top doesn't really move. So you, if you notice on the bottom, you've got all this material, right, this food in there, it's going and on top, it's just, huh, what's going on? But if you shake it up and down as it's whirling around, you kind of toss everything together and then it comes out okay. You don't have to over process it. Turn it out onto a clean surface. Okay. And 
about a pound of flour, I know I had 18 ounces in there, is about all you're going to be able to get in there. So don't double it. Uh, you can double it if you want to make more pie, but you're just going to have to do another batch. Okay, so I've got some flour. Flour. <clears throat> and then just start to bring everything together. I'm going to slow down. And you see, I'm using my fingers and fingertips. I'm not, and I'm using this part of my hand here. You see, right? I'm not going, because I'm not making bread dough or making pastry. Remember I said before, this part of your hand is cooler. Your fingers are cooler than here. If you do that, it's pretty darn warm. You do this, it's not probably warm at all. So reason being, you don't want to melt that fat. And there you go. See, that's it. I didn't do a ton of kneading. You don't want to work up that gluten. So you can still see there's bits of, even with all that processing, right? There's still bits of butter in here, and that's going to go when it's in the oven and give you that flakiness. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half. My lovely bench scraper. I'm telling you, you got to get one. Make sure it's flexible. This will be the bottom. This will be the top of our lattice pie. And I also have some dough that I made before that'll be the bottom of the Dutch apple. At this point, it's still cold actually, you can feel it, right? Which is a good thing. But you still have to chill it. Why? Two things, you want it to rest because it'll end up becoming more tender, right? And it'll be easier to work with because right now it's kind of messy. For me, the best filling is something that's got a little bit of, I don't know, I don't want to say mushy, but a little softness here, a little bit of not crunchiness, but firmness here, um, different textures going on. You get a little bit of tart, a little bit of sweet with that nice crispy crust. So in order to get that, uh, you use a selection of apples. I normally use like a minimum of three. I have a selection here anyway of Pink Lady, um, Granny Smith, um, Gala, and Fuji, which is my personal favorite. Once you have your apple peeled, this is the way I like to do it. If you have a core, you can use that, right? Um, I don't have one because I don't particularly care for them because I found that no matter what you try and do, you're always going to go this way or that way, and then you're going to have to go in there and gala seeds anyway. So I just cut in half, cut in half again, basically quarters, right? And then place the apple on the board thusly, and then on an angle, just now you've removed the core and the whole outside is done. Okay, we got our six pounds less, probably about a pound uh, from the peel and the core. Um, and here's what we have. Now that you have quarters, what I like to do, some people will cut them this way, right? But I kind of like them this way, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and there's a reason for that. We're going to cook the filling first. And that achieves a couple of different things. One, it's already cooked. So really, the only thing you're doing is you're cooking the pastry all the way through. You're really just warming the apples through, right? And then so they set inside because they're already cooked. And number two, because we've already, and we will, I'll show you, pre-thickened, whatever juice is there, we don't have to worry about a soggy crust. Okay, uh, we are at the stove, as you can see, and we're gonna pre-cook these apples. Um, I've got a uh, supply on my stove, and I've got it over um, moderately high heat. I'm not preheating it all the way because I don't want the butter to burn, so we're just gonna put that in there. 
So once the butter is melted, we're going to add the apples. At this point, this is absolutely asinine, uh, but it is funny. Believe it or not, that's going to cook down to about 50% or less of the volume that you're looking at right now. You can see it's, it's level now. Remember, it was up to here. So it took about 10 minutes to reduce by, I don't know, what is that, like uh, maybe 40%. Now that it's there, we will add sugar. Now, <laughs> don't freak. <laughs> Some of you are going to go like, oh, I can't believe he's adding that much sugar. <laughs> uh, so there's a reason for adding that much sugar. You're not going to get that nice, I don't know, sticky sweet sauce that holds all those little pieces of apple together. In the recipe, I think it says uh, one cup of sugar. So I'm just stirring it together. And when you add the sugar, it's going to start making the apples exude even more juice. See? See all that juice in there? See? And that's some, that's, that's gold, okay? That's gold, as long as it doesn't saturate your bottom crust. <laughs> You'd never want to saturate your bottom crust. Anyway, uh, but we're going to take care of that. Now, okay, we're going to add the cinnamon and salt. The salt actually accentuates the sweetness. And our whole point and purpose as far as cooking this down is to make sure the apples are nice and tender. You're not making apple sauce, so you don't want to cook them until they're completely broken down and whatnot. You still want those, you know, slices of apple. There will be some apple that breaks down and gets a little mushy, but that's fine because that is augmented or balanced with the other pieces that are pieces. Oh God, I wish you could smell this. If you look down in here, you'll see that the juices are less and a little thicker, right? Right? So you're like, oh, okay, great. That's fantastic. I don't need to add any thickener. And you do because they're still going to be cooking. I know I said earlier warming through, but they're still going to be cooking, right? Because you're putting them in an oven. So I have the tapioca starch, some water. And just like you always need something acidic in a savory dish, right? Like you see me sometimes, I'll use um, vinegar, right? Or lemon juice in a savory dish because you need some sort of balance. You need some sort of acid, not an acidic sort of experience in a savory dish, but an acid. you need a little bit of lemon juice to offset the sweetness. So this is pretty much what we call a slurry. I know you've seen this before, right? And now we're going to add that. And that thickens on contact as long as your liquid is boiling. The apples, when they're actually in the crust in the oven, they're going to exude a little bit more juice. So you need to like make up for it, right? By adding a little bit more than you would. And there you go. That's your apple filling. And now I'm going to turn it out onto a sheet pan, spread it out. And we're gonna let it cool. Okay, we got the pie dough chilled and ready to go. If you start with a square, you're probably gonna end up with a square. If you start with a round, more than likely you'll end up with a round, okay? So I'm working my way from the center outward. So if you get a tear like that, don't worry about it. Just kind of pinch it back together. See how easily you can 
release the dough from the counter with that thing, and then you can check if you have enough flour, right? So I'm gonna flip mine over a bit. And for the bottom crust, um, I typically will make it a little thicker than the top crust because you get more support that way, right? Okay, here's one way. This is the roll method. So you place the rolling pin about a third of the way down from the top. Take your vent shaker, flip the dough over, roll the dough towards you. Kind of eye it so you get some overhang, right? And then cross your fingers and flip. So if you get a little bit of that, it's okay. Just kind of help it along. And that's pretty much it. Okay, here is all the filling that we made. So I'm just gonna eye it down the center. And we're just gonna fill it. And now for this, you wanna pack it down, okay? Sometimes, you know, when you're putting something together, uh, you wanna leave it sort of loose, depending on what it is. This, you wanna pack it down. But look at that, it fills it all the way up. So that's, for one pie now, remember, six pounds of apples in one pie. I mean, it's not six pounds anymore because we cooked it and cooked some of the water out, but. And don't get any apples um, on the edge here because the edge we're going to need for our lattice top, right? The dough has to stick on something. And here's our crumble that we made earlier. Don't do this. I mean, you can, but people tend to do this type of thing, right? And then they keep going around, and they keep going around, and they keep going around, and it, all, it gets all over the place, right? Just take it and dump it in the center, whatever you think you're gonna need. Then hold your hand like this and just push it to the outside. Okay, and you don't get, you get a little bit there, but not like, not like when you do it the other way. And you wanna make sure the whole thing is covered. You don't want any apple showing, no peekaboos. And just hold your hand like that and let it drop into place. See what I'm doing? I'm not trying to sprinkle it, because that won't work. This will end up being our Dutch apple. Okay, and now we're gonna finish the lattice, here's some more tricks to ensure you get a really nice looking lattice top, okay? Because I know a lot of people love lattice top, but they're terrified of it. Okay, so remember, I'm, I'm rolling this out just a little thinner than the, than the base, okay, right? But the one thing you wanna make sure of is that this is, the diameter is wider than the diameter of the pan, okay? And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna roll it, don't fold this one. We're gonna roll it, and unroll it here, okay? And just like a pizza, make sure you can move it, right? This allows you to get, uh, to cut multiple strips the same width, right? So whatever you're looking for, you just sort of expand it to what you want. Go ahead and cut, strip the dough, and then place this next to the last one on the right, or yeah, on the right, and you can just sort of eye that one. If it sticks, just kind of make it go down, push it down. Right? And same thing here. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. 
So now what we want to do is remove the edges here. Don't want that, right? That's, this part's okay. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So what we want to do is spread out each strip just a bit. Work back and forth this way, right? And then this one, we're going to move out. 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 So now, just adjust so that your empty space is about the same width as the dough, right? So about an inch. So we're going to start by bringing this down by half. Oops, sorry. There. Okay. If I had one more strip, that would be ideal. Then we're going to take, because this is the center point with the longest strip, we're going to take the longest strip from here and put it there. Okay. Try to make it as straight as possible. And then we're going to flip that back. Flip that back, flip that back. Now we go to the next one over that was already lying there, right? Of course, we're going to do every other one. We're going to come back, come back, come back. Get this one. Lay that one down. See, so it's sort of, this is what I mean. It's sort of braiding in a way, right? Or weave, I should say, not braiding. So now we're going to work this way. So the one I just used, I'm going to go up this way. Because now I'm working towards me. Okay? So there's your lattice. And you can still move it. That's important because you want to make sure to get it on your pie. Finger in your water. Glue the edges. And then here's sort of the center, right? There's the center. So you know you're going to need to come like about there, right? So hold it right over the top. Hold it. You're not pushing. You're just holding the lattice in place as you tilt it toward away from you and then slide the lattice off. Now you can just adjust it a bit. Right now, because this is a flat edge, you can go ahead and just crimp the edges this way so that they stay in place. And then just like before, I think for me anyway, the traditional just egg is best and get a nice brush. Don't use those rubber things. You know what I'm talking about? And paint the dough because you want it to be nice and golden brown. Don't make little pools of egg in the, uh, in the apple. Sanding sugar. This is basically um, sugar that uh, won't melt in the oven. It gives you that nice little um, sparkly crispy crust and just sort of sprinkle it on there. You can use regular sugar if you want. Okay, I got the oven preheated to 375. Uh, no, it's usually 350, but um, for this pie, I like 375. And the rack is in the middle. And here's the key, a pizza stone. Preheat a pizza stone. And then when you put your pie on there, that pizza stone will ensure a nice brown crust. At this point, I think we deserve a cup of coffee or tea or something. I'm going to put the other Dutch apple in the other oven and um, come back in like two seconds. So what's better than a pie? Two pies. Here's our lattice. You can see how that came out really nice. The, uh, it's nicely browned, right? Nice clean edges. You can see the apple glistening in there. 
And here we have the Dutch apple, my favorite when I was a kid. Sharp knife. I'm gonna go right down. Look at that. Ooh, see that? Look, all that apple, nice and packed in there. It's moist, right? There's a little bit of that sauce, if you will, but it's not running all over the place. Now this one, remember we put it in a glass dish because I wanted to show you the, the its bottom. <laughs> okay, anyway. So we're gonna cut into this one. Oh, oh boy, look at that, look at that. Yes, I'm having two slices, what about it? Wow, looky there. Now that, for me, that's apple pie. Okay, let's try this thing. Nice and flaky. If you really want these recipes, um, I think you should. Go ahead and get it down at the bottom. Click subscribe, um, like me, like it, like the recipes. And um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Damn, that's good.